mossy oak swamp bottom dew drop falling Our old Tom answer in a hoot house calling Nothing like the sound when the day breaks uh, We're just testing out some general uh, deer hunting calls You know, you're just typical your grunts and your rattles and your uh, bleats your bleats and different things uh, Just a few of them, not all of them out there but just some typical ones that are used for range from shotgun season to Rifle season to bow season, whatever, whatever, you, whatever, whatever you need for. Hunt. Early, late hunts. Just got the real general, Primos, the little can, doe bleats for early bow hunts. Just finger on top. Real, real easy to use. Uh, what I would use for a early bow hunt would probably be my Primos call. It'd be the uproar. Uh, it's a buck call, but I think it's just a little bit smaller for it's like a little buck. You can make it sound like a big buck, but you know what, I just make it sound like it's three calls in one, so here we go. It'd be like, and then I can make it sound like a deeper buck and just go. Well, what I like about this call is, usually in the uh, early season, the bucks are a little bit dominant but they're not as dominant as during rut and stuff, so they will come and investigate what's going on and see what little bucks trying to push them off. But basically, the grunt calls work, I'd say, through the whole year, wouldn't you say? Grunt calls, mainly. But Depending on what it, what's going to come in. Yeah. A buck's not always going to come in and do a grunt call, but, I mean, if it's if it's too early in the season, they're not in rut, then, I mean, they might come to it. Just yeah, depends on the kind of mood they're in. But what... What we'll gets the deer going is my night hail, easy grunt call. It's just one grunt call, it's no multi call, nothing at all. But what I do do it, this is only during rut. I would only do this during rut and pre rut because there's no use of doing it afterwards. So you just sit there and you get a uh, doe. You got a doe out front of you and you see a buck coming, you just go. And that's usually a buck trying to stop a doe. So he's going to come investigate and be like, well, there's a doe in here, and there's a buck trying to get her before I am. So, I'll try to go on and investigate. And then if there's a buck out there, and you're like, well, I don't know if I can call him in, I'll just do this. I'd roar at him, because that's usually a bigger buck, and usually deer are like, well, I'm going to go investigate. But if it's a smaller buck, or it doesn't look dominant enough to you, don't do it, because it will scare deer off. So, just get up here and you go. couple times and if he won't come in you, you just don't have no chance I'd either go to a farm blade or something but Daniel will show you here what he got on uh, this is calls. one of the older uh, I mean you can still buy it but I've had this for a couple of years it's just the Primos general hardwood grunner just got the uh, you can take it apart you can change the sound just the real general you can you know move the tube change it and then it's got a uh, on the reed, there's a an O-ring that you can change and make it sound like different, like a fawn. And then you got a doe blade on there. Just all different kinds. Just you know, from a buck to a doe to a fawn. fawn. Just I mean, you know, trophy buck, regular buck. Just it's a good call to have. It's, it's an all-round call to have. Just to stop them, stop them and call them in or whatever you gotta do. Well, I'd say for your fawn call on there, coyotes, you know, you yeah. wanna kill a coyote, you can do a fawn bleed. Yeah, I've had a couple coyotes come, in. come into that call. They'll come in, but if you do a fawn bleed and you see a doe, the doe might think it's one of her group's fawns or a fawn needs help, so they'll come in and investigate. I've seen people do it a lot, and we've killed actually big does off it. Bucks, I mean, you could do it, they might just look at it retardedly, but. You know what? That fawn bleach probably number one way to get does coming. So, uh, I got a bleed on here, but you guys seen it's basically like the same bleed as he is. But there's one call in here. It's a uh, when a door, uh, deer snort wheezes, either when it's scared or a buck will do it when they scare their bucks off. He'll just sit there and he'll be like, <laughs> and usually when he does it, he'll lift his tail and his mouth will go straight back up in like a V angle. 
and it scares usually the bucks off. But every once in a while, if you do that, they'll get the bigger dominant bucks to come in. But I would make sure it's a dominant buck because either a little buck or the bucks that aren't dominant but are pretty big, they will get scared off. I've seen people do it before on TV, and I've known people, my relatives, have done it and scared deer off. So it's not one of the calls where you just go out and do it 24-7. It's one of the calls where you have to see the deer to do it. But, well, you want to do about the pack rack thing? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, for Christmas, I got the pack rack, and it's a neat little call. I've seen it on Night Hill. Uh, they're like my role models kind of for hunting. I like watching them. They don't kill fenced deer. I think that's just the stupidest way of hunting. I think it's cheating. But if that's your way, uh, go ahead and have it to you. Um, they hunt down in Illinois, which is nice because it means they hunt in your hometown. They tell you what tips. But I've seen them using this down in Illinois one time. You just take it like this. It's odd even shaped. So you just stick it on here and you just go... Do that for about three or four minutes straight and that's usually what happens this is about as good as regular antlers but you know what they have a little carrying case thing on them you just take them snap to your belt right here and you're good to go so and it's a little more compact than the rattling bag it doesn't make as much noise always. when you're carrying it and then no one really uses the antlers anymore but those you can use those too they just, work they work just this well. is smaller it's compact it's not going to make noise in your bag just spend a couple extra dollars and get this. But well, tomorrow me and Daniel are gonna go out. I know we're turkey hunting, but me and Daniel had some deer experiences earlier on this season, Thanksgiving Day. Daniel looked up and there was a bull buck coming out, and Daniel said, "Go ahead, shoot it." We just sat down. And it's still pretty early, and uh, we're calling, calling for turkey, and here comes a buck, and his throat was all puffed out. You could tell he was in a rut. Smell the dough and was running through. And yeah. Ended up getting him. He was a small one, but he was I mean, a deer. People say he was a small deer. I'll, I'll show you guys a video of his rack later. But I think killing that buck was a memory for Thanksgiving because we were just sitting there in buckets thinking we're not going to shoot deer. We're going for turkey. But the funny thing is, it was my first bow kill. I had my best friend sitting right next to me in the timber, and it was just one of them deer where it was a memory to kill rather than the size of it. I'd rather kill that deer than a 20-pointer just out in the middle of nowhere, you know what? I think it was just the biggest memory I've had ever. And then we don't we don't shoot and hunt for the big ones. We hunt for meat, and I mean, the rack's nice, but we don't have as many ginormous deer. We don't hunt on a, uh, a reserve where there's big deer everywhere. We shoot what we see, and we try to shoot the does, keep the population. Yeah, out. we're one of the people where We'll hunt bucks, big bucks, but we'll take does out before the rut and after the rut. You gotta keep the herd even. And out. you gotta keep it where all the deer are even. You know, we'll take maybe a couple little bucks out during the year because we want all the deer to have a fair chance. And sometimes when we hunt, we have overpopulation, so we have to take some deer out of the herd. But I would throw me, I would make this little device right here. It's called a wind seeker. It's probably one of the best things ever. People use water and stuff, but it's just this little powder, and it tells you the wind's coming, and you don't know how many times it will save you from deer smelling you. Because you can sit in the stand and find out where your wind is, and you can put doe esters behind you to cover your scent, or you can just sit there, because maybe the wind's blowing behind you, and the deer are coming from front of you, so they won't smell you. So all you gotta do is shake it up a little bit, and you gotta go, and you just blow it like that into the wind. And then it just goes, and it, like in here, it won't go nowhere. scent free. Scent free, and you can get them in doe estrus, too, and doe pee. So you can use it all year and nothing wrong. Well, uh, this is just a real general call video. We'll have more videos coming soon. Hopefully, we'll have a uh, turkey we'll video get our soon and maybe some deer videos. But we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe. All right. Thanks. Bye.